nuclear fusion. The Americans repeated the groundbreaking experiments, achieving higher efficiency. Last year, scientists at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory succeeded in conducting a controlled nuclear fusion reaction in which a positive energy balance was obtained, i.e. more energy was obtained than was used to initiate the reaction. Now the researchers have repeated that experiment, achieving even greater energy efficiency. Last December, all the media in the world reported on a breakthrough in the work on nuclear fusion. American scientists managed to obtain a positive energy balance in the thermonuclear fusion process using high-power laser radiation. The energy generated in the fusion reaction was greater, 3.15 megajoules, than the energy supplied to the fusion fuel, 2.05 megajoules. Experts from various institutions unanimously emphasized that this is a great progress in the work on inertial nuclear fusion and an important step towards mastering nuclear fusion as a safe, cheap and environmentally friendly source of energy. On July 30, scientists again carried out a controlled thermonuclear reaction and, according to specialists. They managed to obtain more energy than last year. While there is still a long way to go to create a reliable, self-sufficient source of energy, repeated experimentation is sure to provide important insights into improving the technology. The U.S. National Ignition Facility, NIF, is located in the nearby Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. There is a device equipped with some of the most powerful lasers in the world. Experimental programs related to nuclear fusion are carried out at this facility. With the help of 192 lasers and hydrogen isotopes, Attempts are made to artificially create even more extreme conditions than those prevailing on the sun. Hydrogen isotopes are then converted into helium, and large amounts of energy are released in the process. It was in NIF last year that the so-called ignition threshold, thanks to which it was possible to sustain this reaction, in the new experiments, the researchers focused on getting better results. And they succeeded. We can confirm that the experiment produced a higher yield than the December 2022 experiment, said NIF spokesman Paul Rehm. He added that detailed results will be presented at upcoming scientific conferences and in peer-reviewed publications. The experiment was repeated on July 30 and its results turned out to be better than in the case of December 2022. While then it was possible to obtain energy at the level of 3.15 megajoules. This time it was 3.5 megajoules. The lasers alone were responsible for delivering 2 megajoules, so a net energy gain was achieved. Nuclear fusion is the process that powers stars like our sun. Mastering how to control it promises a near-limitless source of clean electricity in the long run using a small amount of fuel. The fusion process fuses atoms of light elements into heavier elements at high temperatures. This generates huge amounts of energy in the form of heat.
In many centers where research on thermonuclear fusion is conducted, devices such as a tokamak or a stellarator are used. Within them, plasma is confined and held in check by powerful magnetic fields. This method requires enormous temperatures. To carry out the synthesis, hydrogen must be heated to temperatures exceeding 100 million degrees Celsius. Only then will lighter atoms be able to combine into heavier ones. The energy generated by the fusion reaction should maintain the temperature, and the excess heat can be converted into electricity. It's a method of controlling a fusion reaction by magnetically trapping the plasma. Another method is inertial plasma confinement, and this is the method NIF scientists are using. The fusion reaction here is triggered by powerful lasers. In both cases, the hydrogen isotopes deuterium and tritium are used as fuel. In the first method, the synthesis process is slower, which makes it easier to control. Such thermonuclear reactions have already been carried out in tokamaks and stellarators in several research centers around the world. However, the problem is to keep them for a longer time and to achieve a positive energy balance, which means that the reactor should produce more energy than is supplied to it. The approach used by the NIF researchers uses a system of lasers to heat the plasma fuel. Fuel pellets containing deuterium and tritium must be heated to high temperatures and subjected to enormous pressure. It is necessary to achieve conditions similar to those inside the sun, which is a natural fusion reactor. Achieving fusion reactions under such conditions releases several particles, including alpha particles, which interact with the surrounding plasma and further heat it. The heated plasma then releases more alpha particles, and so on. Thus, a self-sustaining reaction is created. But its initiation requires ignition, i.e. triggering the fusion reaction using lasers. In their study, the scientists used a giant laser system that covers an area equal to three football fields. The system consists of 192 lasers whose beams focus their power on a single point where there is a tiny cylinder, Holram, containing the aforementioned deuterium and tritium. A short but extremely intense laser pulse is directed at this point, which heats the fuel to a temperature high enough for the deuterium and tritium nuclei to overcome their mutual repulsion and fuse to form helium nuclei. However, to produce energy that could power homes in this way would require lasers that were at least a hundred times more powerful. In addition, they would have to generate pulses even several times per second. hundred ancient tombs carved out of rock have been discovered in Turkey. Excavations near the ruins of the ancient city of Blondos in Turkey have revealed 400 rock-cut tombs dating back to around 1,800 years ago. Valuable artifacts were found in burial chambers and the walls of the tombs themselves were covered with intricate paintings. 
Archaeologists suggest that this is not the end of discoveries. A team of researchers discovered the tombs near the ancient city of Blondos, about 180 kilometers east of the Aegean Sea in present-day Turkey. The city was founded in the time of Alexander the Great and existed throughout the Roman and Byzantine periods. Many tombs contain mixed remains of the dead. This suggests that families used the same burial sites for many generations, said Birol Khan, an archaeologist at Usak University in Turkey and head of the Blondos excavation project. We believe that the rock-cut chambers at Blondos were used as family tombs. After the death of a family member, the sarcophagi were reopened, a burial ceremony was performed, and then closed. Says Khan, the city of Blondos is located on a hill surrounded by a valley that is actually a branch of the vast Usak Canyons, one of the longest such systems in the world, says Khan. The ancient inhabitants built an acropolis on the slopes of the canyon. Although archaeologists have known about the cemetery for over 150 years, no systematic excavations have been carried out so far. Kanya's team started work in 2018. Researchers also worked in the ruins of the city itself. They managed to find two temples, a theater, a public bath, a basilica, city walls and a gate, aqueducts, as well as tombs carved in the rock. According to Khan, this is not the end of discoveries. As a result of our work, which was sometimes dangerous, we managed to document about 400 tombs carved in the rock, says Khan. Unfortunately, the necropolis was plundered many times by robbers looking for valuables. The arrangement of the tombs is not uniform. Researchers have discovered both single chambers and those consisting of several rooms. Fragments of pottery and coins remaining in the graves indicate that they were used from the 2nd to the 4th century CE. Also the technique of making wall paintings in tombs indicates that they come from Roman times, argues Khan. Artifacts have been found in some of the graves that were supposed to help the deceased after death. Among them, mirrors, diadems, rings, bracelets, hairpins, medical instruments, belts and drinking cups. Thanks to similar objects, researchers can better understand the life of the ancient inhabitants of the city. The walls and ceilings of the burial chambers were decorated with colorful, intricate paintings, although many of them have deteriorated over the centuries, says Khan. In the 24 chambers, the frescoes are still visible, although they are in poor condition. Some of these tombs were used as animal shelters by shepherds long ago, said Khan. The frescoes were also covered with a thick and black layer of soot due to fires centuries ago. But the restoration team was able to clean some of the paintings, revealing vivid floral, geometric and figurative scenes. The archaeologist says, vines, flowers in different colors, wreaths, garlands, geometric shapes are the most used motifs, describes Cam. In addition to them, 
We also found frescoes with mythological characters such as Hermes, Eros and Medusa, and with animals such as birds and dogs, he adds. There is still a lot of work ahead of researchers on the site. They expect to find even more unknown tombs. The team also plans to conduct DNA tests that will reveal the origins of the deceased, as well as their gender, age and eating habits.